I want to talk about a film that has kind of been... Hmm, I don't know if I want to say, like, highly anticipated, but definitely promoted to, like, the extreme. Uh, I'm not sure if this was pushed at all. I don't think I was able to really find anything. I just believe it took a long time to actually film because one, it's got a lot of really great actors in it. Two, it's really visually stunning and it's just a really, really good film from start to finish. And what I'm talking about is Dune. Now, a little bit of a backstory for some who aren't 100% um, into this kind of universe in a way. I'm not going to say that I'm 100%, but what I will say is that I remember being really young and when I was like super better at reading, not saying that like I'm bad at reading, I just, there, I was always like one book after another after another and I did that for a very long time and then I kind of fell off and now I kind of try to do, you know, finish a book as long as I can. I don't read as much as I really would want to, but I did do a lot of reading when I was younger and Dune was really on my list as a film that I really wanted to, as a film, as a series of books that I really wanted to get into because I loved the idea of having this continuous story. What many may not know if you're not like like exposed to the Dune universe is that it's got like, I think maybe a dozen books. Like it's a long series. It's got like six in the main core storyline um i believe it's six and then it has a couple of spin-off ones which are still like kind of connected but i don't believe they really focus on like the main story arc which is what the first six focus on and that's a lot of books and a lot of backstory that really gives you the idea that they could have gone a long... Like this, if this is as successful as I think it's going to be, it can go for a long time because of all of the source material they have. And if there are really diehard Dune fans out there that may really appreciate getting this content to be to have a live-action portrayal, this could definitely be something that's successful. With that being said, this isn't the first time that we're seeing this. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen uh, comparison uh, videos or read comparison articles uh, between comparing this film and the first time the film was attempted, which was back in 1984. Now, in the 1984 one, uh, it's, you know, it's the mid-80s, the graphics weren't there the idea of storytelling wasn't 100 percent there so there's definitely a lot of different issues that that one probably has there's probably a lot of people that really like it i don't remember it all that well but i do remember watching it when i was trying to get into the dune books and if i don't remember a lot of it and i'm gonna say that if i don't my basic thing is that i if i don't remember movies that well that means they weren't worth remembering and if I really did enjoy a movie, I watched it more than once. I've never seen this film more than once. And if I watched it now, it would be like watching it for the first time. I do want to now seeing this new film, but it's hard because it's. I can guarantee you it's not going to live up to what this film was able to do. Um, so they had that movie. But what some may not know is that there was an attempt at not one, but two completely different television series now i say different because i think both of them were on the sci-fi channel but i believe they were different specifically because there was a huge change in cast as well as the name were the names for both of them were very much different i believe if you look it up there's only one or two books that the first one's about and then the second one or the second attempt is kind of about I want to say maybe the first three novels or something. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. I didn't even know that there was two shows. I remember there being one. And the first one is titled Frank Herbert's Dune. And it premiered on sci-fi, I want to say, late 90s-ish, you know? So that was at least 15 years after the first film that this was able to... That they tried to do something like this. Now, I believe it was... Uh, an actual series. I'm not sure if the first one was a miniseries or not. I do know that the second one was a miniseries, 
where I think there was only three episodes, maybe, that culminated in what this story was, maybe four episodes. And this one was called Frank Herbert's Children of Dune. Now, again, why do I think it's completely different? Well, if you look it up, the cast it has completely changed, regardless of it being on sci-fi. And again, I believe if you look it up, I believe the first one is only based on one or two books, and the second one is based on at least two, possibly three books, and they're not even the same books. So maybe they are sequels to each other. Again, I didn't even know the second one existed. And the funny thing about the second one is that it stars James McAvoy. And I didn't even know he did this. And this was later on, I want to say 2003-ish, 2004-ish, if I, if I read correctly. Not 100%, don't quote me on it. But definitely worth looking into if you're trying to see what else they've attempted for Dune and to see the progression of what they've been able to do. Uh, and Sci-Fi Channel has always been good when it comes to making good shows you know i was a big fan of channel zero even though that's kind of more modern i do think that if maybe they gave this more of a shot but then again they might have also not done the story justice you know so if you're a huge fan of the dune book series and the novels and all the side stories you might have looked at these two television series and thought they were garbage Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I've never seen them, and like I said, I don't even remember the first film all that well, and I'm going to say it definitely doesn't live up to this film. Now, let's get to this film. This film is directed, I'm going to butcher this guy's last name, Dennis Villeneuve, Dennis V, I'm going to call him Dennis V, because I'm not going to butcher this guy's last name, because I'm really happy about what he was able to do. Now, what else has this guy done? He was the guy who directed Arrival five years ago um, with uh, Jeremy Renner, Forrest Whitaker. I loved Arrival. He's the guy who directed the Blade Runner series. He's the guy who directed Prisoners, that extremely insane movie from like a decade ago with Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. Like, he's got a lot of really good films under his belt. So the fact that he's on board for not only this film, but also the apparent sequel that's coming out, because I didn't even know that they were attempting to do more, like, stories, like, after this. Granted, it is a huge book series, but I don't know if it was going to get as big as people were hoping, or as maybe the studio was hoping, to do sequels or do more films and whatnot. But they immediately felt that it was going to happen, and it's promoted as just being Dune, But when you go into the film, the first five minutes, you see Dune Part 1. So a Part 2 is coming out, and he's still the director, and I'm very happy about that because I like his vision. Out of all the films I've mentioned, I've seen them all, and they're all great. And this is just another pleasant thing to add to his repertoire, I would say. Now, with that being said, it's got a great cast. Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, Josh Brolin, even fucking Batista's in it, you know what I mean? Let alone Zendaya's small role and Jason Momoa's small role. Even the guy who plays the main character, um, uh, Timothy uh, Chalamet, he hasn't been in much from what I've seen, and this is a nice kickoff for him as a young actor, and I think he's going to go places. Uh, maybe he's been in more that I can't think of off the top of my head, but this is the first thing that I can definitely recognize him in, and I will know that this, like, Dune is him. He's the face of Dune moving forward. So I definitely can't wait to see more from this uh, young actor as well. Now, the film in and of itself is just tremendous. From start to finish, it's so good visually. It's so good at setting a tone that kind of keeps you wanting to know what else you know what i mean it you want to see what happens next i'm not going to say suspenseful like edge of your seat i'm going to say that it's good at telling its story and building its story it's not filled with fodder you're not watching nonsense you're not watching filler content you're you're watching stuff that's sort of necessary not just for the progression of the story but also for the progression of the characters And the soundtrack is tremendous. Each individual, like, portrayal of each of these characters that they are showing... Again, I don't know much about the books, but they're just... They're portrayed in such a light that overshadows 
probably anything else that they've done for the the Dune world. The the concept of the the spice and the survival suits and the need for water and even just the 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 betrayal of like the the foundation and and there being a, an empire and the the it's just it's concept of the things that it utilizes with the environment it tries to set up. It's just done very well and I feel like everything kind of gets explained as best as they possibly could there might be one or two things that they probably could have added to add a little bit more backstory like i don't know too much about this power that he has maybe the explanation of what that was was enough but there's this power the main character has his mother has it he inherited it it's a thing where that only women are born with but him being a male born with it is kind of like meant to be that he's the one that like they've been waiting for he's been prophesized and whatnot i don't 100 percent know much about that they they kind of tease that and they'll probably go more into that in part two but this power of the voice which is kind of which is basically you know mind control but you have to speak it you know you if you talk with a certain tonality you can control people's minds and make them do th- do the things you want so this boy kind of has that but he's learning it, you know, and, and his mother is obviously a master at it. And his father is the leader of this house who's been commanded by the Empire to go to this world that he's apparently never been to. But he understands their culture, you know, to an extent because he has these visions about them and he's just kind of doing things kind of naturally and it's surprising a lot of them. So the idea of him being the one it's a good level of teasing to kind of want you to like ask questions and it makes you want to like, I, I want to see the second one. I need to see the second one, but they don't really explain what the voice is, where the voice comes from, or very much a lot of the backstory behind that. So I do wish I kind of had a little bit more of that. Maybe it's going to be more in the second part. I don't know, but that might be one of the two gripes I have. Now, the second one is there is a lot of missing content when it comes to a lot of things that happen. Like, there's a huge battle, and there's a lot of characters that go into that battle, and we don't see or hear from any of them after the fact. Maybe they're leaving that for me to be asking questions for the sequel. I'm going to assume that's probably it. And then there's also just the, the, the betrayal. It didn't really make all the much sense to me you know what i mean like it's there's a lot of things that happened in the story and i'm not going to spoil too much i'm not going to say who the betrayal is or who the characters are that kind of go missing but what i am going to say is just that those they're these little things that they they kind of just put in there and i don't feel like there's enough to give these things credit to the point where i would go okay I'm okay with that. That makes sense to me. Like, there were still questions I was asking after certain characters, you know, e- even just the concept of, I don't know what they call They call her, like, the All-Mother, who is the, um, the main character's mother's power. There's, like, a high priestess of who, like, has, like, full control over that power. And even just that group isn't really explained a lot. So there's a lot of explanation that they don't give. And... I'm not the biggest fan when stuff like that happens. And that really dates back to one of my primary dislikes for like Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a great example of that. Because when you watch the first two episodes of Game of Thrones, you don't really understand a lot. You're trying to just remember fucking names at that point. And if I didn't have my wife sitting next to me explaining things, I wouldn't get anything. So when you need somebody who's probably more enthralled in this universe to sit you down and explain things without you having to do it on your own, it, it kind of diminishes, I I don't want to say like the quality, but it diminishes your investment in the story. And that's just a personal thing for me. But again, from start to finish, it's a great film. Even those little gripes that I have, maybe not everybody does have them, but it is a very, very, very good film. And I would say that if you haven't seen it, 100% go to watch this film in theaters. 
that's going to be the best experience you're going to have when it comes to watching this film. It is totally worth seeing it in theaters on the big screen. I think it's in 3D too. It's definitely IMAX. I don't know about 3D, but definitely go see it before it leaves in one of those formats because it is so worth it. The visuals are just so done so, so well. And it's great to see something like that coming out of Warner Brothers because that's le- that lets me know that if they're starting to really get into the 3D, right? Like we know they can do IMAX perfectly. Like we know Warner Brothers has the ability to do IMAX. But 3D to me is very much like a Pixar thing. It's very much a Disney thing. It's a Marvel thing. Like nothing really beats the way they've been able to do 3D. To me, when it comes to other 3D movies I've seen, nothing really compares to what Marvel or Disney are having capable of doing. So the fact that Warner Brothers is kind of stepping into this, I don't know many other films that are 3D, but this would totally be worth seeing in 3D. So uh, I hope I didn't spoil too much, and if you really haven't seen it, really go watch this movie. It's totally worth it, especially with a sequel that's already been planned. Like, if this movie bombed, the sequel's planned. You know, the the part two is coming out. They can't not give us a part two. So there's a sequel coming and I'm looking forward to it. If you haven't seen it, definitely go out and watch it. You will not be disappointed.